Hello everyone. So I've been doing a lot of talk about the charging infrastructure and found an article here from yesterday about a couple that took a road trip in their non-Tesla EV. So this is from Business Insider. Uh, the headline is, a couple took an electric car on a 1500 mile road trip. They had to stop 12 times and forgo heat due to their range anxiety. Taking an electric car on a road trip can be a stressful experience, at least according to a couple who took their Kia EV6 on a cross-country trip from Michigan to Florida. Axios reporter Joan Muller said her husband took the electric car on a 1,500-mile road trip. She joined him partway through to see if the U.S. is truly ready for mass EV adoption. While electric cars are becoming more pre prevalent, charging infrastructure isn't quite what it should be, Muller wrote. We were constantly thinking about where to charge next, Muller wrote of her experience during the trip. It occupied our minds more than where to eat or spend the night. They stopped 12 times to recharge the car, which has an estimated battery range of 274 miles over the course of the 1500 mile four day journey. And that charging times were between 20 to 55 minutes. The reporter said that while they were never afraid of getting stranded, the trip took a lot more planning than it would have with a traditional combustion engine vehicle. The couple had to juggle route planning apps and billing accounts with various charging companies, which can get confusing, as well as dealing with glitchy chargers. Muller said her husband drove the car alone from Detroit to Washington, D.C., where they met up to head to Florida. During his solo portion of the trip, he said he was so anxious about the drain cold temperatures would have on the battery that he didn't use the cabin heat choosing instead to rely on the heated steering wheel and seats. While EV range continues to improve, charging infrastructure still poses a major hurdle for electric vehicle adoption. Mueller is far from the first EV driver to experience charging hassles or range anxiety on long road trips. Last week, tech YouTuber Marquez Brownlee, also known as MKBHD, said in a video that he believes the hassle of public charging is ruining electric cars. Earlier this year, the Biden administration rolled out a $5 billion funding plan to improve EV charging infrastructure. Well, apparently it's $7.5 billion. And some companies have also stepped in to fill the gap. Last week, Google announced it plans to launch an AI-powered version of Google Maps that would help electric car owners find charging stations. This is a non-Tesla EV doing trying to do a road trip across North America. And yeah, they had a poor experience. But yeah, I've been saying this all along. If you don't have a Tesla and you want to do a road trip, be prepared to do a lot of planning and for headaches and charges that don't work and having to deal with different apps. It's not going to be a good experience. Unfortunately, traditional car manufacturers uh, have seem to have decided that Charging infrastructure is not their responsibility. I think they're of the mindset of the internal combustion engine where they don't put in gas stations. They, they build the cars. It's somebody else's business to, to deal with fueling the car. But Tesla realized that this was going to be a problem. So they now have the largest EV charging network in the world. <clears throat> so I've done plenty of road trips across, across North America, and I didn't have these headaches. I, w I went from Southern Ontario to Florida, a very similar path that this couple did. And I just put in Key Largo, Florida. The car calculated the whole trip, told me where to stop. I wasn't struggling, you know, trying to find different apps and join different networks. I had no range anxiety. But yes, if you're trying to do that in a non-Tesla today, unfortunately, this this is what I would expect. You know, not not a fun experience, a challenging experience to say the least, which I had experience with too uh, in the early days of owning my Model S. Going across Canada, there was not Tesla superchargers, so yeah, I had to do a lot more planning. So yes, yeah, so like I I found that fun. It was fun to try and plan it out and you know, find the next charger. But as time went on, I didn't have to do that anymore because Tesla supercharger network became so prevalent that I just type in the destination, you know, could be 1500 miles away and it calculates all the charging stops, how long I need to charge. And I, I don't have to stress about it. So Tesla's system, I think is very well set up for this. I've had some people comment that, oh, well, other cars have 
have faster charging times and better efficiency and whatnot. Well, it, that may be. It, it may be possible to charge the car faster, but if the infrastructure is not there to make use of that fast charging time, then what good is it? You need the charging network to, to support that. Tie lighting, unfortunately, the, if you don't get a Tesla and you want an electric vehicle at the moment, if you want to do road trips, you you might not have the best experience. So if you do want to do road trips, I would highly recommend looking at a Tesla. Hopefully this will change with, you know, the infrastructure being added. We see the U.S. government, you know, putting $7.5 billion towards this. So I'm hoping that'll change and hoping, you know, somebody with a, a Kia EV will be able to do a road trip and not have these kind of hassles, you know, Google working on it with their maps to improve the ease of, of finding these charging stations. And maybe it'll plan out the whole trip for you, just like the Tesla already does with their built-in navigation system. An article highlighting what I kind of already knew, the, you know, a non-Tesla is, is just not going to have a, the best experience doing a road trip across North America at the moment. So hopefully you enjoyed and learned something. My name is Evan Bertrand. This is the Evo Green channel. Please like and subscribe, add a comment if uh, there's anything you want me to cover. And thanks for watching.